OK, Mom. We're back. Back. We're back. Hers always sounds better. It's because I practice every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day I sit at home and I practice my wear back. <laughs> Yo, she wakes up in the morning and she's looking in the mirror. Back. <laughs> <We're> back. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Welcome back, baby. Uh, welcome back, guys. How is everyone doing? How's everybody doing? Hey, now, how are you doing? Girl, I, I'm drinking a really good cup of chai that you made, not going to lie. And it is it is very good. Ooh. It is very good. So I'm doing good. Oh, I'm doing good. So, you, so you tell them what they need to do while I sip Yo, <laughs> you, you sip your chai. That's what you need to do right now. But ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching us on YouTube, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's all below. And uh, give us a nice rating on Spotify, you know, and uh, follow us on Spotify. There's a little notification bell. You guys can also click that. That way you'll have an idea of any time we release our new episodes. In case you don't know, they're on Wednesday mornings at 8 a.m., 7 a.m. Yes, 7, 7 a.m. Um, and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We love the family. We appreciate you all here. And it's really important to follow us on Instagram, especially because that's where we pose a lot of our questions. Absolutely. Yes. And what is our question of the week? You guys, today <laughs> is juicy. Today is a juicy one. <laughs> it's a juicy Lucy gahoosy okay Ooh, with cheese inside today we are we asked a question okay we asked the insta world a mm. question mm. and the question that we asked was share your toxic friend scenarios first of all thank you all because some of you guys sent us these fabulous detailed stories we apologize if we did not get a chance to respond. Yeah. But we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. Guys, there was so many responses yeah. that like we were we were just trying to get through it. So we're going to go through a couple. We will. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's what we're going to do. You know what I like? I think instead of calling these questions of the week, we are going to call this girl chat. Ooh, I like that. I like it because you coined that phrase and I love it Ooh. and I want to use it. So welcome, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen, to the segment. <laughs> we almost had a mic drop. <laughs> I, cannot, <laughs> I cannot with myself today. A literal mic drop. A literal mic drop. But we, she saved we're, herself. <laughs> she saved herself. And we're getting used to the new mics, people, okay? Also, we're not going to cut this out. This, this is, is going in raw footage because you guys want to see how, <laughs> how it is. Welcome to the Realist Podcast in Welcome the world. Welcome to the Realist <laughs> Podcast in the world. So, welcome to the segment, which is called Girl Chat. Girl Chatty okay? Chat. And we are going to combine it with a what would Hina and Aruj do? Absolutely. We'll take turns. I like that. All right? Let's do so, it. So, the whole point of this segment is that you and I, we need to put our shoes in to the people who have sent us these stories. Zone in. We're getting in it. You guys zone in with us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because, like, we want to hear your responses, too. So, yeah. like... I love when people share their like responses on IG mm -hmm. or like Spotify or under our YouTube. Please share your responses. We do read them. Mm -hmm. We do read them. And we will get into it. And do you want to go ahead and ask us? I will. I will tell you the first one. All right. Okay? Go ahead. The first one. My friend accidentally let slip that she talked about me behind my back and then said, it's no big deal. Everybody does it. Oh. <gasps> That's so mean. That's so mean. How do you do that, yo? I know. And just compose yourself. No, but for me, I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know, it came out because karma was like, let me, let me slap you up real mm. quick. Mm. Let me show you what's popping. Mm. Karma's real, real. Karma is real, real. Also, like, you know, um, I think in a few episodes ago when we were doing a Q&A, somebody had asked us if we like to like get together and like talk after a yeah, wedding yeah, yeah. or whatever yeah. whatever and we were kind of like gossip sesh yeah and we were like we don't really have time to do that honest to god i'm not even joking like it's just not that way yeah or if we are ever talking we are just like we are just talking crap about ourselves yeah let's be real majority of yeah. the time it's that like the way i walk in sometimes like a girl's not even wearing a jacket it's like minus 20 outside mm. i'm just like don't ask me yeah what just happened yeah today yeah <laughs> And so I feel like when you have friends and the minute that you break that trust with a friend, girl. let's say, okay, I'm going to put myself in this girl's shoes. Okay. So yeah. let's say I find out that a friend has talked behind my back. And when I confronted this friend about it, she was like, it's all good. Everybody does it. First of all, red flag. 
That's what like the you, brightest red flag ever. Yeah. What do you mean everybody does that? Or like she said, no big deal. Yeah. Girl, that, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. And, and like it accidentally came mm-hmm. out. Because obviously it's something that like you do often that it's come out like exactly. that. Exactly. And like, Shoot. you know what it is? Your, your trust is so broken in that yep. friendship. Mm-hmm. How can you look at that person the same way you can't or you share can't. things the same way anymore. and then it's also like they're trying to like invalidate your feelings like if you're hurt by it, it's like it's no big deal mm. are you kidding me yo listen take tips from that friend on how to gaslight because oh, that's what she just did absolutely and mm. i feel like you don't need friends like that nope you really don't need friends like that that is really toxic and unfortunate that that happened because jeez also y'all we are so sorry these things happened to you yeah totally okay because you know what, Hina, before we move on to the next one, I think you and I, um, we've briefly talked about this before. Yeah. So, you know, you go through hard times in your life when you lose relationships with people yeah. in your life, okay? Sometimes it's unfortunate events, the passing away of someone that you knew. Yeah. Um, you moved to a different country. Yeah. You moved schools. You moved schools. So, yeah. you know, unfortunately, that friendship kind of like simmers down or whatever yeah, the case totally. may be. Sometimes you get into really big arguments in fa- with family members and that relationship is not there. Yeah. What? How come nobody talks about the heartache that you get when you lose a friendship girl it is it is very hard it is so hard especially when you've known the friend for like a very long time yeah and then sometimes you're just like you know maybe it's just that like a lot of us don't want to be confrontational yeah and we almost want to be like but like i have such a good relationship with you and like i just want to it's okay it happened it's no big deal like mm-hmm. we'll get through it and whatever and then like maybe the behavior is consistent yeah and then eventually you you have to set boundaries mm-hmm. but then when you lose them you feel a lot of guilt you feel and you just feel sad because yeah sometimes you know when when for example if you go through a breakup Sometimes you only see the good after that breakup. Yeah, yeah. It happens the same with friendship. It does. It really does. If you does. lose a friend in your life, sometimes you're like, oh, but did I make a big deal? Absolutely. Like maybe we could have still been friends. That is so true. Like the did I make a big deal of yeah. it? Yeah. The way you overthink. Oh, and you're always. like, maybe I shouldn't have said this. Or like they're going through so much. Yeah. And sometimes you're just like, yeah, but like what about what I'm going through? Exactly. We never think about that. It's always about like, First, let's focus on what they're going through. Yeah. After they like (laughs) gaslit me. Let's think about them first. (laughs) What the hell? So we are also validating everyone's feelings out there because losing a friend is hard. Losing a friend is very hard. Nobody talks about how to navigate that breakup. That's so true. And nobody, people just think that once you lose a friend, it's okay. It's not a big deal. You'll make new friends. Yeah. But when you reach a certain age, and I think I can speak for people who maybe are in our age group, it's so hard to make new friends. It is so hard to make new friends, guys. And you don't want to. You're like, I'm at an age where I can't share everything that I've been through I in this life. I can't share everything. And it's also like, how do you trust people? How do you trust people? Like, no, really, like, how do you trust people? Absolutely. Because, like, I honestly feel like I have the hardest time trusting people. I understand that. Especially, like, sometimes when you get burned, you're like... I got to be extra careful now because the last time I trusted someone, they like did me so dirty. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, now I have to have my guard up all the time and be so careful with like what I share, who I share it with. It is messed up. It is messed messed up. up. And like, you know, people always like, let's like network and let's go to this networking event. Let's socialize and this, that. And it's like, you know, if you guys do end up going to events like that and we've gone, yeah, it takes a lot to go. It takes a lot to go. And we have each other. Yeah. So I feel like there's always comfortability going with somebody that you know. Absolutely. You take a sibling. You take another friend. It's cool. Yeah. If you go by yourself, like kudos to you. Oh my gosh. Because that takes a lot of courage. It takes so much courage because you're just like, I don't know a single person. I have to like introduce myself. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. Like I've gone to like certain like influencer events. Like not a lot, but like the few that I've gone to, I've always felt like... The environment is very like stuck up, Mm. very stuck up. And to be very honest, I've heard this from a lot of people that I've talked to that go to these events regularly, like that they feel like it's a very inauthentic vibe. Right. And people are just there to like meet someone for the views Mm. and make friends with you because you have a certain following or whatever it is. So there's like not a lot of that genuine feeling. Right. So how do you ever make a friend like like a proper friend at a networking. Yeah, exactly. And it's so hard because for example, when we did our Q and a episode, Mm -hmm. okay. 
I asked you to give me an elevator speech. Yeah. And then you asked me to give you an elevator speech. Yeah. Honestly, guys, that was a negative two out of ten. Yeah. Our elevator speeches sucked. Nobody would hire us. <laughs> First Your, of all, yours was still better than mine. I, I mean, I guess it was all right, but honestly, it wasn't good. I, I listened back to the episode and I was like, really, Aruj? You could have added a little bit of Mirch Masala. I should have added some. Mine was like, I work. <laughs> <laughs> mine was like, my name is Miriam and I work. <laughs> like, hire me, please. <laughs> and so imagine going by yourself to a networking event. Oh my goodness. I and can't. you have to have your elevator speech on lock. Okay. Yeah. Because you're meeting people and you could be like, this is potential. Like if you go to an influencer event, yeah. you're like, this is somebody that I could collab with. Yeah. This is somebody who can hire me for this. This yeah. is somebody who could pay me for this. Yeah. And how are you going to sell yourself? But then it's like, then are, am I selling myself for my page product podcast yeah whatever it is that you're doing or am i out here to make friends yeah and then that's such a hard battle too that is a hard battle that really is a hard battle and then you know everybody else is doing the same thing yeah right like it's not just you everyone is doing the same thing and so and i also think like sometimes when you have that moment where you are at a networking event and you try to approach someone and they kind of like snub you mm. it is like the worst feeling oh. and you're just like i want to go home oh. like i don't want to i don't want to be here i want to go home you know what is i can also equate it to like when you get ready okay you put your kids down to bed yeah okay and then you get ready for a girls night yeah like, yo let's do yeah. this finally okay you get ready and the kids are good dinner is done you put your shoes on, you get in the car, you go, okay? And while you're driving there, you're getting a little bit of mom anxiety, as yeah, usual. typical. Come on, that never goes away. But then you're like, it's all good. I'm so excited to see my friends. And then you go out, and it's like not a nice night out. Girl, it is not a Either nice out. Either the restaurant sucks. Oh my God, girl, so The food true. sucks, so the true. service sucks. So Everything true. is too expensive. Yeah. You don't want to tip anyone. Yeah, so or, true. Or you're just having a shitty night with people that are being negative. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then Facts. you're looking around and you're like, why did I even get ready to come out? Absolutely. This was That's a so waste true. of a night. That's so true. It's also like sometimes you have friends that like pick on you mm -hmm. and they like pick, 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 pick on you. And like initially you think it's funny and it's like it's not a big deal. And mm -hmm. then later on with time you realize that like I should not be feeling so shitty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like this is not healthy and I should not be feeling like shit. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like you just... It's like, it's so, it's, it's like, it just leaves such a sour taste in your mouth. And you're just like, why? Like, why did I spend all this time mm -hmm. when I could have had a great night? And instead I just had a shitty ass. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I feel like it's just so hard to find genuine friends who elevate each other. Oh, that's so true. That's so Rather true. Rather than bringing yeah. women down. Like, and we hear about this all the time. You're like, oh, women always bring women down. Nobody allows anybody. Yeah. To like, even in the workplace, for yeah. example, yeah. women if, who are in power <clears throat> or positions of power, yeah. they will never let, and not, they will act like, in quotes, yeah. that they're going to let somebody come in, like be their assistant manager here or this, that. But in reality, they want to do that so that they can always be a step up. Yeah, I right? think. And unfortunately, yeah. we get a bad rap for that. We do get a bad rap. But if I'm if I'm very real, I actually do think women have a tendency to be a lot more catty. And but this is exactly what I'm saying, because I feel like friend groups yeah. are like that, where you can't really see a true friend in your circle yeah. succeed. Yeah, yeah. Or if you do or if you see that they're happy in what they're doing, for example, yeah. or they're happy with their career choices or yeah. they're happy in their marriage or they're happy in like a hobby that they're doing, yeah. you have to bring them down. Yeah, or like you have to like, and there's also people that like, they pretend yeah. that they're so supportive, but deep down, it's like bothering them that you are being successful. Yo, they are number one gaslighters. Oh my God, I, I don't like, and it's hard to figure out if they're your friend or not, because yep. to your face, they are so supportive, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. supportive. But then something about the vibe, it's just not like it doesn't feel genuine listen chulle pe aag laga di na oh shit that's what it is damn <laughs> she came out with the urdu guys you know it's serious <laughs> you know it's serious when she says things like that okay that's the true definition of a gas <laughs> <laughs> that's so true okay let's go on let's go on to the next one sorry tangent of tangents course. on okay there's mom. gonna be tangents you and tangents. the next one or sure I? I will pick one yes uh, all right uh, this is a two part one. Okay. One of my university friends, we met recently in UK for our degree. And the thing that she said to me was that I need to lose weight. So guys will take an interest in me. 
as I am divorced and otherwise I don't have anything to offer anyone. Mind you, we just met. What? So I'm going to do a recap. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Please. So you're in university. Okay, she's in university. She's in the UK. Okay. And she meets a friend who's in doing the same degree as she is. Okay. Mm -hmm. This quote unquote friend of hers tells her that she needs to lose weight because guys are not going to take an interest in her. And also, she's also divorced. So they're, she's telling her, if you don't lose the weight, that you have nothing to offer to anyone. Girl, all I got to say is, number one, this is not your friend. Number two, the fa dude, because I can't handle that. The fa dude. Like, I cannot. Like, if somebody approaching you and saying, lose weight, I, I would mm. flip a table. Okay. For real. For real. I don't know. Maybe, like, I can't handle that. And yeah. I honestly think that if I heard my friend in quotes, say that to another friend of mine, I would 1 million percent call her out. Yeah. And I'd be like, you need to freaking, you need, you just need to stop. Yeah. You need to leave. Yeah. You need to leave the premises. Also, you are that not in horrible. university to find a man. Absolutely. You are in university to get your degree and to step up. Yeah, absolutely. And you like, you are going to be higher than all the other men that she thinks you, she wants you to attract. And like, what is the this mentality of like, you have to be a certain size for a man to like you. Are like, you kidding me? Have you grilled every man in the world? How Honestly. do you know who is going to like, like someone or who is not going to like someone? Why are you setting a shit standard? Honestly, we do not need that kind of energy. We don't need that energy. That's a shit. That's not even a friend. That's mm -hmm. a shit person. Mm -hmm. they, need to, they, they have some other stuff going on in their life and they need to fix that because that is extremely toxic. Yeah. Behavior. Yeah. And I feel like I this friend of okay. yours is projecting all of that right onto you. Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. I, I, you know what? That is something that I've always thought about that. Like, even when it comes to people that feel the need to like talk smack online, mm. people that like, I don't know if you've heard about this, but there's these like <clears throat> gossip forums. That people, okay, I've heard about these. Oh my God. Okay, there's these <clears throat> gossip forums that people will like go online and okay. they will slander the shit out of everybody. Okay? Like anyone that is doing well for themselves, okay. any influencer, any anyone that is anyone, mm -hmm. they will go on there and this is their bread and butter. Let me take a chai break at home and for the next two hours i'm going to sit here and like say horrible things about this person like did you hear this happen did you hear this happen did you hear this happen it is disgusting that is disgusting it is like the most vile behavior mm -hmm. and honestly i'm not gonna lie i actually went on one of them to see what it was about okay okay so i went on one and i was like going through and i was just like oh my goodness the horrendous stuff like no like it was like the way they just like tear someone apart oh, no. it is insane Aruj like the way that they tear someone apart nothing is okay you can't look a certain way your nose is too big you you're like this you're like that your family's like this they like <gasps> investigate into your family and they like talk so much smack about you what? on an online form and the worst part is that like if somebody tries to be like guys please stop like this is horrendous they'll attack that person oh of course the bullying is insane and i'm oh, like my sometimes when you go on social media and you see people and they're in like freaking tears because somebody has said these things about them you're just like i understand yeah because what human being is okay with that like, exactly it's like online bullying and people think it's okay to say whatever the hell they want just because someone put themselves online and you know what? I think people really need to understand. I know it's easy to like leave a hate comment or whatever yeah. or like judge somebody through a screen and all of that. Honestly, just the next time you feel the need to do it, yeah. just stop and swipe. Like stop ignore swipe. the content and don't be that person <clears throat> to be leaving all of that online. Yeah, like it's happened with us too where people have written yeah. things. And and honestly, I think we're at a point where we're just like, say what you got to say. It, it's unfazed. Like we're unfazed, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. But... I have to say there's a lot of people out there like you don't know what they are going through. Mm -hmm. Be very mindful of what you say to people mm -hmm. because you don't know. Somebody could literally be on the brink of like an emotional meltdown and your comment could be that comment that like that straw that breaks the camel's back. So stop being that person. And instead of swiping, I would even say take a really good look in the mirror mm -hmm. and really figure out why you felt the need to comment something hateful. Yeah, for really, real. Really, like, really take a good look in the mirror. Do you remember the actor who played in Black Panther and he passed away? Yeah. So he had... Chadwick. Yeah, he had cancer. Yeah. And everybody online was like, why does he I look so sick? about that. Why do you look so sick? Why are you losing so much weight? You don't even look that good anymore. I thought you were supposed to be the Black Panther. And then guess what? He passed away. 
And oh. I feel like so many people were like, this is what everybody gets for like slandering him online. It wasn't even that. So he actually did one of his last movies that he did. Mm-hmm. He was like super like frail and thin and like, was he a detective or some police no, officer? No, no, no. It was like this movie where they were like in the jungle, like oh. army veteran or something like that. Okay. And so one of the actors he was working with is like an older actor mm. and he's been in the industry for a long time. And this actor actually came out and he said, you know, I used to see him on set and like people would like be there like massaging his legs and stuff. And I would be like, oh my God, like why does he get like this like king treatment or whatever Mm. like he's only been in the industry for whatever long time and this man felt so bad after because then he realized that like hold on a second like he was only going through that because he was going through cancer yeah and i'm just like y'all don't know the battles people are facing honestly chill out chill chill out out like it's crazy crazy. how do you not i just don't get it i I don't understand it what other mentality i don't understand is how can you as a person, not realize that every single person on this planet is going through something. Mm-hmm. Okay. And like the lack of empathy that I see in certain lack people of empathy. and in friends, let's yeah. circle it back to friends. Yeah, groups, yeah. Right. The lack of empathy they have, like, okay, you know that your friend is struggling. Why do you have to make it about yourself? Absolutely. Or like if, if you are struggling and your friend has not shared a struggle with you, yeah. you immediately thinking, oh, well, your life seems perfect. Yeah. So like, let me tear you down real quick because I think from what I see, your life looks perfect. Yeah. But how do you know what they're going through just because they haven't shared it? How do you know their struggles? Like everyone has a struggle. Mm-hmm. I think what happens on socials is that like people post very curated lives or they post things that someone else might want to have mm-hmm. okay so like you might post like an outfit you might post your relationship you might post like all the great parts of your relationship where like your husband is super romantic or whatever it is mm-hmm. okay and other people look at that and they're like you have the perfect life mm-hmm. because i saw your 30 second clip I think you have the perfect life. And maybe it's something consistently that they post where they post outfit of the days or whatever it is. And they look at it and they're like, oh my God, look, these are influencers. And you know, they get all these PR packages and like, I want that. But um, you and your perfect little life. I actually had someone comment once. Oh my gosh. I'm going to say it because I need to say it. Yeah. I had someone comment once to me and they said, oh, you know, you must be so busy with your perfect little life and your like shopping sprees and like this and this and this. And I looked at the comment. I was just like, what the heck? What? Like it was so um, passive aggressive. And honestly, it rubbed me the wrong way. And they were actually talking about like my sister and I, because we used to do this business together. And I remember sending it to my sister and I was just like, in what world? Mm. Like, how dare you have the Mm. audacity to think you can say that stuff to me. And like, honestly, I, I'm not the type of person that I was like, how dare you say this to me? I, I kind of didn't say anything about mm-hmm. it, but it was like, you know, how they say like it's the ledger, like yes. the, way, the way someone says it to you. It's that it's the way someone says it to you. And it really upset me. And I was just like, you don't know a single thing about my life. Yeah. Not a single thing. I might share like a one minute tidbit on my story. And all of a sudden you think, you know, the inside details mm-hmm. of my life, you know, Jack all. Mm-hmm. So like stay in your chair and stay in your lane. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Yo, thank you for sharing though. Yeah, no problem. But, and I'm sorry you had to go through that. I appreciate you even saying that because yeah. it's rough. Yeah. And like her and I have been through it. Yeah. I know we say we have a bit of a thick skin now, but <laughs> No, we have been through it. And there's a lot of <laughs> things that people say. Some of these things. <laughs> we didn't always have the thick skin. We, we didn't had to grow it. We had to grow the thick skin. And I'm going to be honest. Some, some of the things people say are actually like, they're saying it in such a hateful way. And we are dying laughing. Yeah. To a point like, where like. You, to all of you who have a problem with our laughs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> or like someone, someone said like, it's me overacting. And I'm just like, what do you want me to do, yo? This is who I am. You don't like it. You don't like it. What am I supposed to do? listen like, i love the overacting and i love the laugh i'm just like i'm genuinely like this you're genuinely seriously like this. and then i'm like tell us what your gauge is for like the amount of laughter that is allowed and is not allowed. Well, how much can we Wait, laugh how much is good for you <laughs> so we can make sure you're happy one laugh per segment like what the heck it's not even that it's also like the judgment of like oh my god like she's probably like this and she's probably like that and mm. i'm just like Oh my God, seriously. I had somebody comment on It's so funny. We're like changing the role of this episode <laughs> right now. I got to share the last one, okay? I had someone comment under one of our videos and I was talking about Ibrahim and Idris and she's, she or he, I don't even know who it was. They were like, um, I hate the way that you're saying your kids' names. It's oh so my- white. 
I was like, oh my you goodness. mean Idris? <laughs> like, how else am I supposed to say it? I'm not saying Idris. But why are they so pressed? Yeah. I don't understand. Like, but I don't understand. Like, how much going to happen if I say... What what is what is your issue with me saying it? Mm. What is your issue? How how am I bothering you? Is it ruining your day that much? Honestly, guys, I can't deal. it is what it is. We are who we are. If you're here, we love you. If you yeah. don't want to be here, bye. If you don't <laughs> like something, if you don't like it, honestly, it's totally fine. We are not everyone's cup of tea, and yep. other people are not everyone's cup of tea. If you don't like it, it's totally fine. Go ahead, find something that you like. Mm-hmm. So let's bring it back. <laughs> let's bring it back because another tangent i don't we're like social (laughs) now we change the topic to social media trolls (laughs) you guys that's actually something we're gonna talk about another day okay so the next one i'm gonna read is okay people who invite you to dinner after decades of not seeing each other only because they want to dig up dirt or dish on other Mm. people you're close with or people you know Mm. they can keep trying Mm. there are definitely people that everyone knows that are like this you know that beyonce song Thank um, to the left, to the left. Yeah, 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 yeah. L- when Everything you enter the house, be like, you know what? Box to the <laughs> left. Enter their house and then just be like, you know what? I'm just shimmy to the left and just shimmy get in your car in the driveway. The left. Get out of there. I don't Honestly, like I just I don't like how people need to know everybody's business. I think really? that really bothers me. Like, oh okay. When I have close friends and when we get together, and mind you, we're also not getting together all the time, yeah. right? But when we get together, you do share your personal lives and all this stuff, but you know that it's in the safety and the realm of the gathering, Absolutely. right? Yeah. But had another person been involved or if we go out with more people and it's not like kind of your core crew, yeah. you're not going to talk no. and share those personal things. And those questions should not even be asked as like a mutual respect. So this is the thing. So now let's say, let's say, Hina, you and I haven't met for a decade. Okay, yeah. I'm going to put myself as this toxic friend now. Okay. All right, let's Shit, do it. Girl, let's, let's role go. play. Let's go. <laughs> the gloves are off. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i invite you over i All haven't right. seen you in a decade okay. okay but at one point you and i were besties okay, okay okay we and you know when we were in high school we would talk shit about people okay. you know we did that in high school you know in the hallways you see so and so so and so broke up with so and so whatever we yeah. had that okay. chat okay? okay okay now 10 years later we're moms we got kids whatever but you were still in touch with that old high school crew God damn. okay but when i went to university I decided to cut everybody off. Okay. 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 I, I decided to do my own thing. Yeah. Went on my own path. Yeah. It's all good. Okay. Yeah. I invite you over. Okay. You come through the door. All right. <laughs> Why am I getting scared? You know, I, know. <laughs> I love role play. Okay. So you come through the door. All right. And I'm looking at you and we're like, hey, how are you? Whatever, whatever. We sit down. I have Kana ready for you. It's all good. Okay. And then I sit there and I was like, oh, so are you still friends with so-and-so? And I would be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Emma. Yeah. So I heard, I heard that she got a divorce. That's the shit that would bother me. Okay, <laughs> that's the shit that would freaking bother me. Okay, because like, but you know, these toxic friends also, do that. Yeah, but then you're also in a situation where like you're in someone's house, mm. they've made you food, mm. and like it's like it's hard to also like get yourself out of the situation. Exactly. Right. And let's be real. If you grew up sort of in a similar environment that we did yeah it's also hard for us to like not want to like you still are trying to people please even though you know you don't want to people please absolutely right yeah, yeah. so you're in a home you're like okay this person opened their doors for me they like cooked and cleaned even though she's a mom yeah, 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 yeah. and now they're asking about somebody's business which is not super private yeah because yeah, let's yeah. say that that person had disclosed this information yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but she just wanted to hear from you yeah because you're a close friend and because i know more about exactly. it exactly i you know what i i feel like i would hope that i would be like question back and be like oh where did you hear that from yeah or like you know like kind of say it in that way because like i think when you grow older you kind of come a, become a little bit more like let me be a little bit sly mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. but i also think it really depends on who it is yeah because then what if like you don't have the decade gap and you've known each other for a really long time yeah that's true then what that's because true. then it, it's then it's like it gets a little bit like muddled yeah because right? you're just like how do i approach this and it's hard you know as as much as we're like stop it and you know you, you should you should have the courage to be like i'm not going to discuss this mm-hmm. at all but sometimes you you really do get trapped you do you do get trapped and you're like okay like how do i say this in a respectful way we're like i'm not um making them feel like oh you feel uncomfortable for asking the question even though they should feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. but we've just been raised in a very like don't stir the pot kind of way yeah right yeah we have but i do think that i i think one of the things that you have to learn and i'm working on this is like that whole thing of what people say where it's like 
pause when someone asks you something think about it and then answer Ooh, right? that's because great like, advice and it's really hard to do yeah it's really hard to do i can imagine it's so hard and i struggle okay but like i think it's a really great piece of advice because it gives you a minute to like gather yourself Mm -hmm. and gather your thoughts. Cause I think there's some toxic people out there that they like see your personality Mm -hmm. and they think, Oh, she's a really nice girl. And like, I can like weasel my way in and like kind of have her divulge things even about her personal life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think you have to be very like careful. Yeah. And it's hard because like, sometimes we view them as friends and then you're just like, whoa, I just told my life story to someone. And like, and then you're driving home and you're like, why did I share that? Right. So that, Oh my God, Hina, that, that that hit home. I swear there have been so many times where I feel like you just, you're in the car and you're like, a, you're like, why did I even go out? Yeah. Why did I even decide oh. to do this? Why did I accept this invitation? Yeah. And then you're like, why did I share that with them? Why did I share that? Yeah. And then you feel like you're just, you're then, then they're fine because they found out the information that they wanted to. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you're sitting in this terrible feeling of like, I shouldn't have shared that with anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't actually care. They're going to August, August, tell other people that. And, and I don't want and them to sometimes, know. Sometimes Aruj, it's not even like it's a friend. Sometimes this situation can happen, happen with family members too. True. Like truly where you're like, I know these family members are super gossipy and like they will, they will, use your like niceness Mm. against you and you know what it is they always and they always use that family guilt over you like no 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 but we're family i would never and and you know what like (laughs) (laughs) freaking shit happens all the time like okay but like don't tell anyone oh my god i would never tell oh yeah i would never tell anyone oh my god who would i tell and you're just like freaking liar (laughs) no but the truth is like i you know what i've i've learned i've learned that like your real friends will not pry into mm. your life. They will give you the space. Mm. And if, if you do want to share something, they, you will share it, but they will never pry in a way. And they will be more concerned about how you are doing. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean, I agree. Like, let's say you're like dating someone and you go through a breakup and <clears throat> you're like, yeah, we broke up. I think fake friends will be like, Oh my God, what happened? Mm-hmm. Not that there's a, it's not horrible to say what happened. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it's not. But like, I think you can figure it out with the vibe. And like, I think your your real friends will be like, are you okay? Like, how For are you real. doing? How are you doing? Yeah. Maybe you learn that with age because I know there's probably situations where I've been like, oh my God, what happened? Yeah. I know I probably asked that. Yeah. But I think with age, you realize that like, it's not about what happened. Mm-hmm. If she wanted to tell me what happened, she would tell me. Yeah. She'll tell me when she wants to tell me. Yeah. And it's not my business to ask what happened. You know what I mean? I think it's really good advice yeah. for a friend that when you know that your friend is going through something, yeah. always ask about them. Yeah. You know, instead of asking what happened or how did you find out or, you know, yeah. all of the who, what, when, where, why's. Yeah. Put that to table that for a second. Yeah. Just look at your friend and ask them, are you okay? Yeah. And it's just like the human thing to do. You know what I mean? Like, it's like if you see us like someone like an acquaintance and they tell you something sad about their life, like instead of being like, tell me more, let me know your inside details. It should be more about like, I'm really sorry to hear that. You know, like, how are you doing? Like this type of thing. Because I think if anything, it's like, it's empathetic. Mm -hmm. And, and I think when you also tell yourself that like, you have to teach yourself these things. Yes. You have to like teach yourself that like, I do not want to be that person that needs to know everything about everyone. Mm-hmm. It's not a good quality, people. It's not a good quality. You should not be like sitting around gossiping all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think like we've we've talked about this before too, where it's like be very mindful of what your circle is. Mm-hmm. Because if your circle, when you go out, consists of people that sit there and all they do is talk about other people, that is not a good circle. You need a new damn circle. Mm-hmm. Like truly you need a new damn circle mm-hmm. because believe that they will talk about you too. Just mm-hmm. with that same energy that they're talking about other people, they will talk about you too. And so like you have to be very careful about what you surround yourself with because mm-hmm. that energy seeps into your life. Believe me. Mm-hmm. That's my TED I talk. I love that. That's my TED talk for today. Welcome to Hannah's TED talk. <laughs> also like learn something from it. <laughs> Absolutely guys. Cut those toxic friends out of your life. This is a good one. It's not so much of a personal experience. It's more of us trying to share our thoughts on something. Okay. Thoughts on friends who change once they get a significant other. Ooh. That's a good one. Juicy. Juicy. My thoughts on that. Okay. So 
I feel like... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Have you experienced this? I feel like I... I don't know. I don't know if... Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe, mm-hmm. but like a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Actually, I have experienced this. Mm-hmm. I have experienced this. But I also feel like I think other people can say that that they would have experienced it with me as well. Right. If I'm being honest, mm-hmm. right? That I think I could have done something like that, right? I might have done something like that. Mm-hmm. However, it's so crazy that someone asked this question because I just, I think it was like someone on TikTok. I think POC therapist. Mm. Thanks for correcting. Guys, she, also like watch out because she might be sitting close to us real soon. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> okay. First of all, love her videos. Honestly. But she was talking about how this exact same situation. Mm-hmm. And she said that like, you can't do that. Yeah. You have to nurture the relationship you have with your friends. Mm. And then also, yeah, make time for the relationship that you have with a significant other. Cause like both are important, Mm -hmm. but like how shitty is it if you're nurturing this relationship with your new partner and things don't work out and then you go running back to your friends that have always been there for you. And that has happened. Let's be real. That has happened. Mm -hmm. That has happened. So, and I, you know what? I also understand that like when you are with a significant other, you do want to invest time into that. Mm. But like you as a person will always need a solid, good group of friends Mm -hmm. because you should always have your own life. That person is not your whole life. Mm. Calm down, everyone. Okay. (laughs) I hate when people, he's my whole life. He's my whole life. No, he's freaking not. Okay. Like, honestly speaking, he probably has his own life. He has his boys that he's going to hang out with. He's going to do his own thing. And honestly, I feel like a healthy relationship is one where, yeah, you guys are together. Mm -hmm. He has his own damn life too. And so do you. Mm. Because a girl needs her girls. Preach, Let's sister. Be real. Like, Preach. That's what I think. That's what I think. What do you think? You know what? I just feel like I, I have seen a lot of this. And I also feel like there are a lot of girls out there who their entire intention in this life is to find a man. Oh, good Lord. Okay. And unfortunately, us, and I'm not really talking about like our age group right now. I'm tapping yeah. into like high school Aruj. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all anybody wanted to do when they were in high school was like be in a relationship. Yeah. Right. And at that time, yes, when you were in a relationship, I feel like people would make that person their entire world. Okay. When you're on MSN, they're not chatting to you. (laughs) They're chatting to that little lover boy. That's in their English class. Okay. However, truth bombs today. (laughs) However, I just feel like, it's so unfair to your friends yes. when you find someone and then you ditch your friend circle for them. A, yeah, yeah. B, I also, um, it's so hard because sometimes you end up in this like relationship girl era where you think you're better than other people because you're in a relationship. Yeah. And I think that kind of toxicity is where that friendship is not, should, shouldn't exist. Yeah. That makes sense. Because makes if sense. you are, if you are a group of four, let's say, okay. Yeah. And one of them went and found a boyfriend and yeah. all of a sudden now she's like, Oh, well like, cause he did this for me and he did that for me and he's doing this for me and we're going here and we're going yeah. there. And now you're making everybody else feel bad. Aww. That for, makes me so sad. Yeah, for like her, that person being in a relationship and you yeah. are not in a relationship. Yeah. And all of them are getting together and you're like, no, I can't because I have to go like here or we're going to go watch a movie or we're going to go do yeah. that. I think it's not fair, but I feel like those are red flags that maybe you try and catch early on in a friendship. Oh, that makes me really sad because I feel like, honestly, let's be real, guys. Okay. Everybody wants to find someone or have someone in their life that like dotes on them. Yeah. It's just like a normal thing, right? Everybody wants that. And I think like when you have friends that don't have that, like, don't like sit there and like brag about it. And like, don't make them feel don't bad make about them it. Feel bad because honestly, I know it sounds so like, oh my God, they have feelings too. But like, really, they have feelings yeah. too. And don't be like, oh, maybe if you like fix your hair a little bit, you can come out and maybe we can like, he can bring his friend or something like that. I don't know. Even that kind of Why stuff I don't world? appreciate. You know I what I mean? I appreciate that too. Like, yeah. Like you think I'm that desperate? Yeah. Like Not I even, needed that bad? Yeah. It's like the, the desperate aspect the of it. But also like now your friend is looking at you, judging you. Yeah. And it's telling you, like, maybe if you lose a little bit of weight, yeah. maybe if you straighten your hair, maybe if you do your eyebrows, maybe if you do something, you will attract the attention. Exactly yeah. like that university situation yeah, we were totally, talking about. Yeah, totally, totally. The friend is like, you're, we're in university now, you're divorced, you're here to find a man, so just yeah. lose some weight because you'll attract attention. But it's like, how does she know? 
like what you want in life. Yes. And like what it like what is meant for you too. Like I do feel like certain people are meant for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's we went nasty. back. Yeah. We spoke about how we wish we could go back to our like 18 year old self. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. talk about like loving yourself and like yeah. having more confidence in who you are. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like if you are listening in and you are in high school, like don't let your friends validate who you are oh my god and don't so true right like don't seek for validation don't seek validation within your friend group especially in high school guys when i tell you like real talk Mm -hmm. when you're in high school you think high school is like the be all end all of your life okay like those problems are like my world is freaking collapsing Mm -hmm. i got into a fight with one of the girls at school my world is collapsing when i tell you when i tell you 10 years from that high school moment that you Mm. had okay you're gonna look back and be so freaking embarrassed yeah and you're probably (laughs) not gonna talk to half of those people yeah okay and like honestly speaking another thing that i really noticed is like majority of the people that are like hot shots in high school Mm. are nowhere to be found later that's true that's true it's not in a negative way but i i just feel like maybe that was their peak Mm -hmm. honestly Mm -hmm. so don't fall into that trap Mm -hmm. like focus on yourself focus on loving yourself Mm -hmm. and i think to your point about like somebody saying something to make you feel like shit it is like how are you gonna like break someone's like entire person not personality but like how are you gonna break being it break someone like break someone apart like that Mm -hmm. and like really like cut them up for what reason? Because mm-hmm. you, for some reason, think that you know what's best for them. You are not yeah. them. If the roles were reversed and someone had said that to you, I can guarantee you'd be butthurt and you'd mm-hmm. be crying. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, like, just freaking think about it for a second before you say the things you say. For yeah. the love of God. <laughs> I'm getting so damn irritated. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like it's bringing back so many, like, moments in high school where I would really do... Like, I would feel like... I'm walking in and you're being judged on like what you wear. And, you know, I talked about how I was more like a tomboy and like, I didn't really care to dress up or do any of that stuff. And then, but my current friends are my friends from high school. I love that. And we grew up together. You know what I mean? But I had other friends in high school and you just kind of realize that you don't want to be a part of that, right? You don't want to be a part of that energy. You don't care to want to engage in that kind of conversation. And then you find out through like whatever a Facebook at that time that yeah. that person is just kind of like they're just living a regular Meh. life. Meh. It's it's the other thing is that like I also have friends that I've known from like a very young age, mm-hmm. like literally like one of my friends I've known her since like grade one. Whoa, she's such a good friend of mine, and like we have the type of friendship where I will not see her for like months. Oh yes, and then I'll see her, and it'll be like right where we left off yes. and there's never any hard feelings never any hard feelings if like one of us misses a birthday never any hard feelings if it's like hey i forgot to call you it's like the easiest freaking friendship mm-hmm. and i love it like i'm just like this is the type of friendship i need in my life like i just don't want to always be like oh my god i have to call you <laughs> i have to call you <laughs> Hina, i have a friend like this oh my god this hit home I have a friend like this. I have known her since grade four. She knows exactly who I'm talking about because she (laughs) listens to the podcast too. Um, And honestly, it is like the most genuine, stress-free friendship that I actually have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, mind you, we, yeah, we don't, like, I don't know her kids' birthdays. Yeah, yeah. And like we, but when we reconnect... It's like the best. It is the best. And it's It's like you literally pick up where you left off. You pick up where you left off. And it's also just like, I have a lot of faith in her. Yeah. And like, I think it's just because we've shared so many experiences. Mm -hmm. Like, like I can't even tell you, like there were times when like her and I would like sit on my roof in my house, like back in the day. Yeah. And we would have like the funniest conversations. And like, it was just like, we've just known each other for a lifetime. Yeah. It's like a really nice friendship and she's so chill. And I have a lot of faith in her. And like, we do talk a lot about like things that are going on in life, but like, there's like this mutual trust that we have Mm -hmm. that I have always appreciated. I love that. And like, for me, it's like, I know in my heart that like what she will like, if she ever shares anything with me, like the, the door is locked. Mm -hmm. That shit ain't coming out. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not telling anybody. 
and it's just genuine yeah like it's a genuine friendship yeah. yeah um with my friend we were like super close and then she moved yeah and then we like didn't really speak all throughout like high school university or anything and then i applied to teachers college yeah and she applied to the same teachers college that is crazy it was so crazy and you know our friendship like we reconnected because we went together and we were roommates wow because i lived oh, on campus oh my god and like we would drive down together <sighs> and we were there together we had classes together and we went through so much life in those in that year yeah and I, and ever since then, I was like, this is like a true friend. It's a true friend. And like, I'm telling you, like, there are friends that can be your like safe people. She is my like, safe person. Like sometimes mm. I tell this friend the craziest stories and she'll just be like, just another day. Yeah. Like, honestly. Yeah. And she like tells me things too. And we're just sitting there like, this is just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's like the most genuine friendship. And, and honestly speaking, it, it like warms your heart because you know, at the end of the day, even though, even if you're going through a rough time, you can say, you can talk and be like, I'm having a rough day. But mm -hmm. at the end of it, you're still like, my cup is full. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas there's other friends where you're like, geez, Louise, like I have to put so much into this because I feel like the friendship needs so much attention. You know what? I am so, I am getting, I'm getting into an era right now where if I don't have the capacity, then you don't, I can't make the effort. Yeah. And you know what, what's really hard for me right now is to learn how to communicate that. Yeah. It and is, I think that's hard. something that it's I'm going to be hard. working on, but it's like, because I've oh, basically never said no in my life. Girl, okay? I, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm trying to understand, like, if I have to put in an effort to go see a friend. Yeah. And I, the, you know this, okay? Yeah. The tables we turn Girl. to meet a friend, okay? But I'll do it. I'll yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I'm there. Then I'm, like, forcing conversation. Yeah. Then I'm, like... I feel like it's a little bit fake. I feel yeah. like I don't really want to be here. I'm too tired. I want to call it an early yeah, night. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Those are all internal red flags for me. Yeah, I think that is an internal right? red flag. Because yeah. I'm like, okay, Arud, you you really don't want to be here. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. what am I going to do? Then I come home and I'm drained. Yeah. And it's like 9 p.m. It's like an energy suck. Yeah. It really and is. I come home and I'm literally like, oh my God, I just want to go to bed. Absolutely. Like, I, I feel like those types of relationships drain you so much. And you are just like why am I investing so much into this? But it's hard to leave. So here's the thing now. Yeah. So if you're talking about a friendship like this and you have that kind of stress yeah. with a friend, yeah. okay? What do you do? How do you even break away or try and set that boundary when, for example, let's say you've been friends for like over a decade, yeah. 15, 20 years, yeah. grade yeah. one, grade four, kindergarten yeah. even, okay? Um, or like you have family ties or yeah. whatever the case may be. Now this relationship is clearly causing you some sort of stress. Yeah. Okay? okay. How do you manage to voice that? How do you set sort of boundaries so that you still want to meet? You're not saying I yeah, don't want to be yeah, friends, yeah, 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 yeah. but you want the other person to be a little bit respectful for like, I may not always be able to come out. Yeah. Don't pry. Yeah. Don't ask me why. It's yeah. literally because I can't. I think, I think that's, you said it, how it is. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we just have to like collectively, like all of us, we just have to learn how to say no. Mm -hmm. And people need to also understand that no is the answer. Mm -hmm. There's no, but, but no, but, or like, mm -hmm. no, and if, ands or buts, yeah, no, yeah. if, ands or buts, no is a full sentence, no period. Mm -hmm. And you don't period. need to pry. Like if someone is saying no, they can't, then no, they can't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, they they have a lot of things going on. Everyone has things going on. And if they can't, they can't. And when they feel like they can, they can. I think if, if it's something that we all have to learn that like accept someone's answer as no, mm -hmm. if they say they can't, then they freaking can't. And Let you it know be. what? You know, if, if a friend is saying that to you, I think it's the onus is on you now to not make that person feel guilty and like respect what they're saying. Yes. Like it's not your concern to pry. If they wanted to share why they would have told you. Yeah. And True. like, honestly, sometimes the answer is just, I don't want to socialize. Yeah. But do you want to hear that? No. So the other person may be looking for other excuses to say Absolutely. no. Absolutely. And like, how many times do you guys watch those like little TikToks where like the girl's getting ready? Girls night. Are we still going? And one friend's like, sorry, not coming. And then everyone's so damn excited to get back into their PJs. We are at the age. Facts. Let's be real. Okay. PJs are the besties. Everybody wants to stay home, watch Netflix and just chill out sometimes. Okay? Yo, sometimes we don't get together for a recording on a Friday night and me and him are like, yo, not going to lie. It's kind of nice to just be it on the is. couch. Because sometimes you just need like a break. Yeah. And a break, not with friends, not just with anybody else, a just break by for yourself. yourself. 
I think we all need to learn to enjoy our own company. Absolutely. And I feel like when we were younger, it was so hard to do because you always felt like you needed to enjoy that company with parents, siblings, cousins, extended family members, and like family friends and your own friends and all of these things. And I feel like as you grow older, and this is something that comes with age, you realize how much solace there is in your own Oh my gosh. You know, I feel like um, my mom would always tell me that like, be very mindful of who you tell things to. Mm, okay. Mm. And then she would also, also tell us that like, you can share things with like your siblings because they will protect you completely. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I, I can't say this for all siblings, but I can say this for mine mm-hmm. that my sisters and my brother, they literally are like a lock, like it's a safe, mm-hmm. like, and it's a safe space. My mom is the same. And I feel like that rings really true to me because I feel like I have a great relationship with them where I'm able to share things and mm-hmm. I don't have to feel like I'm oversharing I'm whatever it is. I don't have to overthink anything. Mm-hmm. So I think like sometimes you just have to have the safe space mm-hmm. and maybe not share anything with anyone other than those people. Yeah. But it's okay to have um, like friends and share things with friends, but just be mindful of the energies that are around you. Mm-hmm. I feel like I just completely went off of what you were saying and I don't girl, know that's what I love I don't even remember what you said girl. I forgot to I'm not gonna lie sometimes <laughs> you, were, you were saying um it's okay to be happy in your own solace yeah that's what you were saying like just be comfortable in your being own space alone, yeah. being alone and that is okay and sorry my point to that yes. sorry was yes be comfortable in your own space and sometimes your own space and that comfort is just your family yeah that's what I was trying to get I like at. that yeah and you know what? You remember when we went to the event and we met a, a really young girl there and she was talking about how she um, <laughs> traveled alone? Yeah. And then she like went to a restaurant, to a fancy, like fine dining restaurant and she had dinner by herself. I was inspired. I was inspired too. Hey, I if you're watching that. the podcast, yeah. hey, what's up, girl? She was um, honestly so nice. Honestly, she was really nice. We really appreciated her company and she was sharing with us how she like traveled by herself Yeah, and she would stay in like hotels and stuff and then she would just make her own itineraries and she was like it was such a life-changing experience for her and i literally looked at her in awe and i was like i can't even think about going to a movie theater by myself and i want to do it everybody says you should do it i've gone to the theater alone Mm. i watched top gun maverick and it was actually nice like it was a great great. movie such a good movie tom cruise Um, my man it was a really great movie and it was it was a really nice time Mm. and i really enjoyed it I haven't actually gone to like a fine dining restaurant, but when Same. she said that, I was like, oh my God, like, I love your courage. Yeah. I love that you're like one of those people that's just like, I'm going to do it. Exactly. She's, like, she's a desi girl too. So like the desi girl is y'all understand. Mm-hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. And I think, I think it, I think we do have to be happy with, yeah. with like being okay with being in our own loneliness yeah you know what I mean? yeah or not loneliness but being happy alone that's in your okay. own space in wherever that space. space may be yes exactly mm-hmm, it doesn't mm-hmm. you don't always have to surround yourself with people i think it also leads into that whole thing of like having large groups of friends girl 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 we gotta talk about <laughs> that okay? because in high school your group is this the group is this yeah okay that, that's a better that's a better group. representation <laughs> and then it goes to boop 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 to like three literally two like maybe honestly two. Speaking, maybe even one no seriously speaking mm-hmm. i think i have an extremely small group of really close friends mm-hmm. i have Same. a lot of like um friends that are like friends yeah yeah like friends we're friends Mm -hmm. but like a close group of friends i have a small one and like i'm I'm very happy with it i don't need a large group of friends yeah Yeah. i've got like these two friends that i literally hang out with all the time known them like ride or dies known them since like day one i know who you're talking about you know know. (laughs) they all know who i'm talking about um and yeah those are like I literally feel like we were babies when we met and now we like have babies on our own. That is so cute. You know what I mean? Oh my goodness. And it's just like, and those are the kind of girls that I wish everybody could experience in a friend group Yeah. because they are the kind of girls that will always make, push you one up. I love you know what that. I mean? Like if, if, for example, let's say we're talking about a job opportunity, <clears throat> yeah. right? Rather than them boasting about it, yeah. they'll be like, guys, what should I really do? Because realistically, if I take on this job, I'm going to get like, let's say an X amount bump in my salary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, but then they're like, do I want to take on that responsibility? Yeah. I have kids now. Yeah. It's going to be asking for all these odd hours. I have to be more in person versus virtual. I have to manage a team of this. I have to do that. And all of a sudden they're like talking about real shit. They're not yeah. out here being like, yo, guess what? I got a promotion. 
da 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 da. Yeah. Ha ha ha. I'm gonna make so much more money now. Da 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 da. Yeah. Look, I'm so young and I made it to this whatever. Yeah. And it's like being cocky. Yeah. yeah. And it, that's the difference in conversation. I you know what that. I mean? It's not so much making the other per- you can you do make the other person feel bad yeah, if you are yeah. a toxic friend yeah but when you are a friend who can change that story it's kind of like your thing when you were saying just ask the person how they're doing absolutely you like if you can just surround yourself with a group of friends who take like for example like something that could be a toxic topic yeah, yeah. like boasting about something and not being really yeah. like nice about it in yeah. a conversation to hey help me out like, I yeah. know that this is a great opportunity for me, but I'm actually seeking help. Yeah. It just makes that friendship stronger because yeah. you look at that person as a human being. They're your Absolutely. friends. Absolutely. Right? You should want to help them out genuinely. Like, if someone genuinely asks for your opinion, give a genuine opinion back. Yeah. Without being hateful or jealous or spiteful. Like, be genuine in your opinion. Mm-hmm. And, like, also consider feelings too, right? Where it's like the way that you're saying something let's say your friend is making like a bad choice Mm -hmm. even right and i think this is something that someone touched on and we'll get to that eventually but like let's say your friend is making a bad choice or even making a choice that you disagree with there is a way to talk to your friend about it true you don't have to be that like rude friend that cuts her up um or like puts her down everyone's life is their own like journey you know Mm. what i mean it's like a journey they're Mm -hmm. gonna have to figure things out on their own like you're not gonna gain anything from being that rude friend Mm -hmm. they have to figure it on their own you can say it to them in a nice way and then move on it's not your business Mm -hmm. but do be like a genuine friend so guys we are obviously tangent after tangent i'm sorry (laughs) it's who it's who we are okay it's all good you guys are here for the tangents So what we're going to do is we have a few more that we picked to talk about for this, for this topic. So what we're going to do is we're going to end the episode here. Um, it's an, it's a, it's a long one. It's a juicy one. Um, and if you guys, uh, just tune in next week, we are going to have a part two. So toxic friends part two will be out next week. It's only a few days away. We're sorry that you have to wait, but this is a good one. It is a good one. And honestly, the reason why we split it up in two parts is because first of all, we don't want to like throw out like a two hour episode for you guys. They're very long. Yeah. Um, and secondly, the reason why we do that is because we want to do a deep dive and we, we want to give you guys like good, real, truthful, genuine responses to this. And okay? the thing is, the minute we sit there and we start talking, this is all truth and real. It's all truth and real. And so, and I also want you guys to like, just like what we said in the beginning, some of the scenarios that we've read out please like respond with what you think you would do as yes, a friend. Yes, please. Like let us know what you think you would do as a friend. And then we will see you guys in part two. Mm-hmm. Remember to subscribe to our channel, follow like, it means the world to us. You don't understand. Mm-hmm. Please subscribe, follow us on IG, follow us on TikTok, give us that five stars and we'll see, we'll you, guys. see you guys next week. Take care. Bye. <laughs>